Hello and welcome to Ingression, the only series that gives you the best tips, tricks, and information on the game that we all love, Ingress. I, of course, am your lovable Enlighten instructor, Incredible Hulk, aka Colin Williams. We have for you today the beginning of the much anticipated Anomalies 200 series. In Anomaly 200 series, we're going to cover the basic strategies to use at Anomalies when you're head to head against a thousand other players. And these strategies are compiled not only from ones that are already commonly used at Anomalies, but also ones that I've discovered and found after attending multiple Anomalies and working as co team lead at a primary Anomaly site where my personal teams have collectively held over 75% of their portals despite being outnumbered. Now, if you have not yet watched the Anomalies 101 video, I highly recommend that you watch it first since it sets up the basis for this entire series of uh, videos. So watch that first because throughout the 200 series, we're gonna be covering the more complicated stuff. We're gonna be covering how to defend and keep portals that you've captured, the best ways to attack and take over portals, uh, what to do in between measurements, and then special tips for volatile teams or teams that contested portals. Uh, but for today's introduction to Anomaly Strategy, we're going to not only go through the basic overall strategy pieces, but we'll also cover gear loadouts and the recommended way to assign positions to members of your team. So let's go ahead and dig right into Anomalies 201. So uh, to start off with, there's actually multiple types of teams, and you'll have teams working on not just a local, but actually a regional level as well. Uh, usually, the, each faction is going to have global operators, and this is a group of experienced players and strategists remotely using Intel uh, maps and push to talk systems like Zello to act kind of as your eye in the sky and coordinate all of the teams together. And that is why it is so, 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 so important to officially register for the anomaly on the events page and get in contact with your faction leadership ahead of time. This way they can assign you to a team and you can be even more effective for your faction. And the teams will have leaders and these leaders are going to be communicating with the operators. And the team leads are usually experienced Ingress players and have likely been to anomalies before to help instruct you on what to do in the moment. They're also probably likely more usually local players so they really know the area as well. Now, as far as for the, the, the teams, traditionally the teams that you'll have at any given anomaly at pretty much all of them is going to be a fielding team, a linking team, a bike team, volatile teams, and portal or flex teams. And that's why you need like an operator or two to coordinate everything because you have all those teams running around doing different things. You want to make sure they do it as effectively as possible. For the actual 200 series, we're going to be focusing on portal and volatile teams since those are the most common teams and the teams you'll most likely be assigned to. For bike fielding linking teams, we'll actually have a 300 series of videos that will cover those coming up later. When you're looking at the team, the number of players on a team will vary, but usually it's going to be somewhere between 8 to 15 players. You want to usually have at least 8 level 8 players in there, and you don't have like a crazy huge team. Uh, as far as no matter what your numbers are, I would recommend having 30% of your players set for a modding gear loadout, 30% set for destroying gear loadout, 20% for deploying, and 20% for flex. So have them set for that pre-anomaly. And definitely uh, to start out with, uh, when you're organizing this team, I highly recommend that your team create a Google Hangout specific just to your team. You'll want to make sure that on the day of the anomaly, you, have, you definitely have notifications for that chat turned on. You'll probably want to turn off other ones. Uh, but uh, you know, make sure that you keep the, the team chat chatter to a minimum. You don't want to be distracting all of your people when they're in the middle of an intense battle. But that Google Hangout will allow you guys to use Google Map pins to coordinate all of your meeting location and desti destination locations. So that way, if a member of your team happens to get lost, maybe they stop to use the restroom and they can't find their way back, they can just use a Google Map pin and be right back to you guys as quickly as possible. For before the anomaly, that chat is also even more useful because you want to make sure that everyone has the gear that they need coming to the anomaly. Because you might have players that are low on gear because they're coming from a place where they really can't farm much. So I usually recommend make sure that you set up a farm the night before the anomaly to fill everyone up on gear. Usually, it's uh, if you do have people that are coming from smaller towns, I would recommend when you're assigning them positions, assign them either a deployer or a destroyer position if they're level eight or above. And the reason I say this is because usually they're gonna be uh, coming to an anomaly and they won't have as many high level shields, which would be useful for modders. But it's very easy to farm them the necessary gear for deployer or destroyer positions the night before. Because if you have 10 players on your team uh, that are level eight and they're at a farm and eight people are already item capped, you should be able to easily get those other two players, whatever resonators or XMPs they need to be able to fill their position. 
So uh, you can also, for players that are lower level, I would definitely say assign those you know, level eight or, or below level eight players to a position that I'll refer to in the future videos and now as levelers. And this, they're all gonna help the modders and they can actually be counted in your team's planning as a modder since even a level one player can place an Axis shield. So if you're level three or four and you're thinking, oh, I don't wanna attend an anomaly because I'm not gonna have the right weapons, that's okay, you can act as a, a leveler and go ahead and still apply and your team will get you guys all set helping out those modders. For a full breakdown of the recommended gear loadouts for each team member position, including the levelers, check out the link in the video description below. It'll take you uh, to a place that has all of the breakdowns based not, not only off of uh, previous anomaly recommendations that have been officially made by both, uh, both sides majorly, but also some uh, little tweaks that we're going to use for our strategy series and that I found from being at the anomalies myself. But uh, this gives every single player a chance, regardless of level, to be able to help and contribute in a way as much as possible and be just as valuable regardless of what your level is. So, you guys have finished farming, it's still the night before, you're about to head to bed. Make sure that your battery packs and your phones are fully charged. Uh, I'd also recommend disabling the OK Google and Siri voice search feature on your phone because there's been a problem with a dirty practice occasionally happen of OK Google bombing where players will deliberately trigger other players' Google voice features, interrupting their playing. It's dirty, it's horrible, but unfortunately it sometimes happens. Um, you'll also want to disable any email notifications you might have for portal attacks uh, unless you want to come back to an inbox that's uh, filled with so many emails that uh, even Hillary Clinton couldn't delete them all. So uh, make sure to disable those. Now you're actually there on the day. Going to the first cluster, you should be completely item capped and you shouldn't need to really farm anything on the way to the portals. However, the levelers should be encouraged to capture gray portals or place uh, low level resonators on any portal that they can without stopping walking. You know, so you don't wanna slow the group down, but they should be placing them as they walk. And they should also hack what they can to keep their inventory count up after placing resonators. This is gonna give them AP and help them level and make the anomaly even better for them uh, while still making sure that your team is as strong as possible. However, they should make sure that they don't use too many resonators. So to start measurement one, they should probably make sure that they have at least 400 resonators left. Uh, they should have 300 left by the beginning of measurement two, 200 left by the beginning of measurement three, and 100 left by the beginning of measurement four. Uh, so when you guys are actually heading to your portal, after that group photo and all that stuff, you want to get to your portal as quickly as possible to claim it for your faction. Uh, but once you're actually there, and if you've been able to claim it, or if you get there and it's already claimed, then you know a few players at a time can kind of take bathroom breaks and grab water or food if you forgot it. Uh, and don't forget the sunscreen. Yeah, and that's because you're going to want to make sure that you guys minimize who has to leave the portal within 15 minutes before the measurement period. And especially, especially you do not want anyone leaving during the measurement. That's the worst time possible. So before you guys even arrive at that portal, you know, I'd make sure that you have your XM bar filled, your phone's hooked up to its battery pack, and the Wi-Fi is turned off because that can mess with your signal sometimes. And that you're prepared to be able to do your part. Now, uh, when you first arrive at the portal, you'll generally want to do or try to do what's known as inoculating the portal. So one designated player, usually it's going to be the captain or team lead, will use a virus to flip the portal to the opposite faction of what it currently is. And they'll want to do this no earlier than 45 minutes before the measurement is set to begin. And this is because the inoculation will make it so another virus can't be used to reflip the portal. Because there's the one hour timeout where viruses, you know, you can't use, uh, if you use a virus, you have to wait an hour before you can use another one. Because uh, the last thing you want is to have control of a portal and then the opposing faction uses a virus and steals it at the last second right before the measurement. So make sure to inoculate those por portals. Because it's a, they're, anomalies are crazy, crazy, crazy battlefields. During the heated parts of anomalies, all the portals in the cluster, but especially if you're at a volatile portal, it'll make your scanner seem like it's almost broken. Because in one second, the portal can, and can turn from completely uh, deployed by one faction to gray and, and back again in literally a second. And your scanner just cannot update fast enough to keep up with all of the changes. So a lot of the focus uh, of what you're going to be doing is sadly little above strategic button mashing. But we'll cover how to better button mash and deploy your agents for the best possible strategies in the rest of the Anomalies 200 series. 
So just make sure to hit that subscribe button and check out Anomalies 202 for how to defend and keep portals while thousands of XMPs are going off in the heated and intense battleground of Anomalies.